Hello, welcome back to Lily's Viking Adventure. Today we have an update on the Red Heifers. It appears that last week the altar was built, lending credence to the idea that Israel does intend on going forward with the sacrifice, which is supposed to take place sometime prior to Passover on April 22nd. The red heifer has garnered attention due to its significance in religious beliefs. Here's what you need to know. The Biblical Context According to Jewish tradition, the ashes of a perfectly red heifer are needed for the ritual purification that would allow a third temple to be built in Jerusalem. The third temple is believed by some radical Jewish groups to be constructed on the Temple Mount, where the Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Dome of the Rock Shrine currently stand. The construction of the third temple is associated with the arrival of the Messiah. Red Heifers in Israel the red heifers are now between one and a half and two years old. To replicate the ceremony mentioned in the Bible, they need to be at least three years old and must not have any blemishes or stray white or black hairs. The heifers are currently in a secure, undisclosed location in Israel. That's not true. They're in an archaeology center. Um, plans include moving them to that's where they're at. Uh, visitor center in Shiloh, where the ancient tab tabernacle of the Lord once stood for nearly 400 years. Historical significance. The perfect red heifer hasn't been seen for 2,000 years since the Romans destroyed the second Jewish temple in AD 70. Jewish activists, along with U.S. evangelicals, decided to breed their own red heifers to fulfill the biblical requirements. The purpose, the ashes of the red heifer are used to purify priests for their service in the temple. A massive white altar awaits these heifers where they are to be burned on a plot of land overlooking the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem. The red heifer's role is deeply rooted in religious prophecy and, and, and anticipation. Their significance continues to spark discussion and curiosity. So I've got an article here taken from MiddleEastEye.net, and let's delve into it. Don't forget to give me a like or a comment. All that helps my algorithms on YouTube, helps me get seen more, and I greatly appreciate it. In the West Bank settlement, Israel's ten, Israelis tend red cows and plan the third temple. Radical plans to slaughter the heifers have raised concern across the Arab world and were even linked by Hamas, I can't say the other word, to the 7 October attack. The red heifers are kept in a pen in an archaeological park in the West Bank settlement. Uh, this article was written by Daniel Hilton in Shiloh, Occupied Palestine, and the published date was March 28th, um, so very recently. <clears throat> Actually, today, yeah, today is the 28th, so it was posted four hours ago. So this is the latest here. On the crest of a hill in the occupied West Bank, five Red Angus cows chomp somberly on some straw. Around them, a group of Israelis look on in anticipation. If all goes to plan, these cows could herald the end of the world as we know it. According to Jewish tradition, the ashes of a perfectly red heifer cow are needed for the ritual purification that would allow a third temple to be built in Jerusalem. That temple, say radical Jewish groups, must be constructed on the raised plateau in Jerusalem's old city known as the Temple Mount, where Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Dome of the Rock Shrine stand today. Some believe this will herald the arrival of the Messiah. On Wednesday, a few dozen Israelis gathered at a conference on the outskirts of Shiloh, an illegal Israeli settlement near Palestine city of Nablus to discuss the religious importance and imperative of the cows and catch a glimpse of them too. This is a new moment for Jewish history, Chaim, a 38-year-old Israeli settler, 
cold Middle East eye as he prepared to take his seat. For years, members of the Third Temple community, led by the Jerusalem-based Temple Institute, which organized the conference, have been searching for a red heifer that fits the description of those used for purification in the Torah. Perfect cows must not have a single blemish, not a stray white or black hair. They can never be placed under a yoke or put to work. These cows were brought all the way from Texas and were reared in special conditions to maintain their purity said Yehuda Singer, a 71-year-old from Mitzpe Yeriko settlement, and a translator of a pamphlet on red heifers. The cows can't even have someone lean on them, said Singer Edna's wet Singer Singer's wife Edna, 69. You can make them impure by just placing your jacket on their back. The perfect cow hasn't been seen for 2,000 years, not since the Romans destroyed the second Jewish temple, which is believed to have stood at the top of the Temple Mount in A.D. 70. Has the perfect red heifer been glimpsed? So some Jewish activists, alongside U.S. evangelical Christians who believe the construction of the third temple will prompt the second coming of Jesus in Armageddon, decided to breed their own. In 2022, five of these promising young cows blessed with glossy ochre hides arrived in Israel from te a Texas ranch with much fanfare. Now you can find them in an archaeological park separated from biblical ruins and flowering lavender bushes by a high steel pen. Hezbollah found out about this event. <clears throat> In many ways, the Red Heifer Conference was like any other. Rabbis and religious scholars delved into the details of the Torah. A couple of people in the crowd gently nodded off under the dimmed lights. In other ways, it was unique. The first two speakers stood at the lectern with assault rifles slung around their shoulders. Hezbollah found out about this event and have been talking about it on Telegram. Kobe Mamu, head of the ancient Shiloh archaeological site, said in his opening remarks, MEE was unable to unearth any of this kind of talk from the Lebanese armed movement, which fired a barrage of rockets into northern Israel the earlier that day, but the conference nonetheless attracted a lot of attention on Arabic social media. One person in Libya joked that the red heifer Found on the front of packets of laughing cow revealed that the spreadable cheese triangles are a Zionist conspiracy. Have you ever asked yourself why the laughing cow is red? He asked. Others more seriously suggested that there were plans to imminently slaughter a heifer on Jer Jerusalem's Mount of Olives, where land was bought up by the Third Temple activists for this purpose. An illustration depicting the slaughter of a red heifer on the Mount of Olives. Rabbi Yitzhak Mamu from the Third Temple Group, Uvin Jerusalem, previously told the Christian Broadcasting Network that a ceremony was planned for Passover this year, which comes in late April. Hummus, can't say the regular word, the Palestinian movement fighting Israel and Gaza has raised concerns about the cattle. In November, a senior Palestinian source in contact with Hummus, leadership told MEE that the group had been closely monitoring efforts to secure a permanent Jewish presence in Al-Aqsa Mosque. The only thing left is the slaughtering of the red heifers, which they imported from the U.S. If they did that, it's the signal to rebuild the Third Temple, said the source. In January, o Abu Abu Da spokesperson for Hamas military wing made a speech marking 100 days since the group's 7 October attack on Israeli communities near the Gaza Strip. In it, he made a direct link between Hamas decision to attack Israel and third temple activists importing the cattle, which he said was an aggression against the feelings of an entire nation. Yaakov a 19-year-old yeshiva student from Los Angeles who wished to be identified only by his first name came to Shiloh for the chance to see the cows for himself. 
I've heard about the red heifers and the first and second temple all my life, so I'm really excited about the opportunity to see one today, he told M.E.E. Yakov understands that the prospect of building a third temple on the site of Al-Aqsa is controversial, but I don't think it should be. These cows were brought all the way from Texas and were reared in special conditions to maintain their purity. There was once a church there, then a mosque. It was originally a Jewish temple, so it should be again, he said. It doesn't have to be violent. Borich Fishman, a long-standing member of the Third Temple Movement, told MEE there is a long way to go between slaughtering a red heifer and building a third temple. He has identified 13 problems that need to be solved before construction can begin, including getting Israel's parliament, the Knesset, to legalize such a plan. That's where I can help on the political side, he said. Since Israel conquered and occupied East Jerusalem in 1967, the Israeli government has maintained strict Ottoman-era restrictions over Jewish prayer and presence in Al-Aqsa mosques' courtyards. Entry to Al-Aqsa has also been banned by the chief rabbinate of Jerusalem since 1921, with an edict ruling that Jews are forbidden to enter the site unless ritually clean, which is impossible without the ashes of a red heifer. Yet, as Israeli politics and society has shifted towards the religious right, allowances have been made for some Jewish Israelis, almost always settlers, to regularly visit the site under armed guard. The Third Temple community hope the slaughter of Shiloh's red cows will allow Jewish people to be purified so they can perform rites and worship in the mosque courtyards. Research by a professor at Bar Elan University estimated that the ashes of one cow could be made into enough cleansing water for 660 billion purifications. One of the main issues is the wakaf, says Fishman, referencing, referencing the Jordanian-run Islamic endowment that manages Al-Aqsa. The wakaf gets a lot of money from Jordan, and I don't think they want to give that up. According to Fishman, small steps need to be taken to secure a Jewish presence on the Temple Mount. The Muslim community is hurting a lot right now, and we need to be sensitive, he said. All we want is a small altar. Some Third Temple activists and rabbis have previously sought to perform ritual sacrifices in al aqsas courtyards at Passover, only to be turned away by Israeli soldiers. Perhaps the Kaf could be persuaded to help collect offerings and raise money that way, Fishman said. Of course, not everyone could come with something to sacrifice. It would be a bloodbath. But I believe there is a difference between what the Wakaf says in public and private, and it could be convinced. In response, Wakaf spokesperson Faras Aldebs told MEE, let them say whatever they want in their conferences. The Wakaf always emphasizes in its statements its decisive opinion that Al-Aqsa Mosque is for Muslims only and that it doesn't accept partnership or division. There is no value in what is discussed in these conferences as long as they are not official, he added. Again, that article is from MiddleEastEye.net and the new development is that they have built an altar. I saw pictures of it, and you can look up pictures of it online. It's white, um, has multiple steps going up to an upper platform. And so it does look like they're going to be going through with it. You know, uh, no stopping, no halting progress, I guess, if that's progress. But it is very worrisome. I don't like the idea of it, and it's kind of forcing the hand of three different religions. So I will keep watching it and anything new that comes up, I'll try to add another video. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you. Have a good day.